Hey there, Mercedes here from prettywebs.com and today I'm gonna to show you how to use the mixer brush to paint with shapes to create things like icing, licorice, spaghetti, and a whole bunch of other fun shapes. Later in the video, I'm gonna show you how to get this free download, so stick around for that. And if you like this video, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel and visit prettywebs.com for more design resources for your blog and business. Now let's get started. Okay, in today's video, I'm going to be working with a few different shapes that I created. I'll show you how to make all of these shapes, uh, but I want to give you a brief understanding of how this mixer brush is going to work before we get started. Uh, I'm in the mixer brush right now, so this is going to be under your brush tool. Um, it's in the flyout menu and it's going to be the last one. So we're here in the mixer brush. The mixer brush has all of these settings here up top. Once uh, you have it selected, you'll see all of this. Now, we're not gonna be changing the brush. I recently did a tutorial about how to use the mixer brush, but we changed the brush settings to create kind of paint textures and things like that. In this one, we're gonna be using only the hard round brush, and we're not gonna change anything because we're gonna be using the shapes that we create to actually make the strokes. So you're not gonna need to change your brushes in any way, except maybe uh, to adjust spacing if your uh, brush is not spaced properly. But other than that, no changes to your brushes. It's just gonna be all about the shapes that we're gonna be using. And another, the other thing for all of these shapes is uh, we want this setting right here. So we wanna make sure that we're using the dry heavy load. This is a preset. If you come to the drop down menu, it's gonna be the third one here. Your wetness is going to be at 0%, load 100%, and your flow 100%. And your smoothing is going to be set to 100%. Right now we have sample all layers selected. But since we do have a background, that means that it's going to pick up on that background. So we're going to turn off our background here in a minute, but I want to show you what happens when you keep sample all layers selected and you try to paint. This is just a clean transparent layer that I have here and I'm just gonna pick up on some color. When you're in the mixer brush, you can load colors into the reservoirs. It's basically what's loaded onto your paintbrush. If you dipped your brush into some paint, that's what would be on it. We have this one on in there right now, so we're gonna grab this one. And you hold down the Option or Alt key and you'll see that little target right there. So make sure that your brush is big enough to grab that. Hold down that Option or Alt key and just click. And you can see that it's changed what's loaded into the brush. Since I made that selection with this black background and we have sample all layers selected, we're getting something that looks like this. This one I selected before I added the background so you're getting a nice smooth stroke. This one, is mixing with the background. So what we need to do is make sure that our background is turned off. You can have a background, just make sure that it's turned off when you're selecting or that you have sample all layers unchecked. The only thing is with sample all layers unchecked is that you have to actually be on the layer. So using this unselected and then coming in and grabbing your selection from, from the actual layer is fine uh, except for when you come to something like this i have this uh, one called noodle right here and it's actually one brush uh, but i have several different layers i'm not going to flatten this just so that i can make changes to it when i want to but that also means that i cannot come in here uh, and layer by layer and sample from it what i'm going to do for this one is just uh, make sure that sample all layers is checked and that my background is turned off. So if you come over to the shapes tool and you choose this polygon shape, uh, this first one has 10 sides. You can change the sides to as many as you need, uh, but this one is gonna have 10 sides and then you have this little drop down menu and our thickness is gonna be 0.5 pixels. The smooth corners is checked off, star is checked off and our indent is gonna be 95%. So those are all the settings that we need for a star like this. And then we'll just drag it out. It does have a gradient fill in it, but it's actually not the one that we wanna use. So I'm gonna use this one. Now when you come down to the 
settings for this one, we're going to use a radial setting and we're going to leave it scaled at 100%. 90, uh, angle will be 90 degrees is fine. Hit the letter V on the keyboard just to grab that and scale it down. And then I'm going to come back with the new layer. Make sure I'm in that mixer brush and I'm going to grab this. Now I'm going to grab it. I'm not going to grab the outer corners uh, because I just don't like the way it looks on this one. I'll show you what it looks like here in a minute. But um, I'm grabbing where that gold color starts. Press the Option or Alt key on your keyboard and you'll see that little target. All you have to do is click. You're going to see that up here. And then you can just go ahead and paint. You can make it much bigger and it's not going to affect the quality at all because this mixer brush is only picking up those colors. It's not actually picking up that shape. So that's our first one. That's the star. Now let me show you what this looks like when I pick up the entire thing. So I'm going to make my brush bigger and I'm going to pick up the entire shape. And you see the difference. Uh, you, the edge here is just much more rough and I prefer this so um, I usually just pick up um, just the inside of this brush. Now you can make a softer brush which is this one right here. This one is the licorice so I am going to use this polygon shape again. So I'm going to go ahead and use 10 sides again. I'm just going to make some slight changes here. So we're going to leave this thickness at 0.5 pixels. Uh, smooth corners should be checked off, star should be checked off. The only thing that we're going to change is the indent sides and we're going to change that to 80% and then I'm just going to drag it out. So you can see that the little points right here are thicker than they are in this one. Now again I'm going to change the fill right here. I'm going to be using this one. This is what I set for my licorice. Uh, make sure that this is set to radial. Uh, it, the scale is fine at 100. Uh, our angle is at 90 degrees and that's all fine. So now I'm going to go back to my layer. Press B for the brush tool. We're still in the mixer here. I'm going to bring that shape size just uh, to, to grab the entire thing. Option or Alt on the keyboard. Click to add that here to my paintbrush. And now you have something that looks more like licorice. Come in a little bit so that you can get more blunt points. So these are all just circles. And I'm going to make one and then just copy it. So I'm going to hit the letter V to make that selection. Option or Alt key and then just drag it across a few times. Okay, I'm here in the properties for, the, for this shape right here and I'm going to um, just pop that up a little bit and these are the this is the gradient that I'm using for this You can make this any gradient you want you could use the same gradient that you used here uh, Make your own custom gradients. It doesn't really matter. This is just kind of what I'm sh I'm using to show you this So this is a three color gradient that I'm using here uh, for this one uh, I changed the settings here. So we're actually using reflected for that, uh, the scale is fine at 100%. So I tend to look at this like a piping tube for frosting. When you put the frosting in there, if you have something kind of in the middle like this, you're going to get all of this stuff that's on the outside and not necessarily this on the inside. So you want to think about that when you're creating these just to make sure that you have some good color on the outside. If anybody's ever tried to decorate a cake, you'll know what I'm talking about. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, this one we're using those same color settings, that same gradient. The only difference here is that this one is going to be, or it's going to stay as linear. And we're going to leave the scale exactly the same. We'll move on to the next one. Same gradient. Uh, but this one we're going to use a diamond shape for the center. Now you can see that the way I have it set up right here, you're not going to see that purple at all. So I'll have to bring up the scale just a little bit just to get some of that purple. Okay, we'll move on to the next one. Same gradient. Uh, this time we are going to use this angle. And this angle is going to give us this really harsh line right here. A part of your tube is actually going to have a very distinct line uh, changing from pink to purple. So let's go ahead and see what those are going to look like. Let's go back to our layer here. 
I'm going to press B to get me back into the brush tool. I'm here in the mixer brush and I'm going to make a selection here of this option or alt to select that. And this is that first color. Now let's select the second one, option or alt. Click on that. So you can see this has a lot more color in it versus this one. This one's kind of like a flat, but still has this 3D, beautiful 3D effect to it as well. Now let's take a look at this one, option or alt and click. And you can see what I mean. So you're getting this purple, but very, very lightly here. Um, that center purple, the darker purple, we're not seeing at all. And this is the one that has the two very distinct pink and purple. And you can see right here how uh, distinct that change from pink to purple is. The spaghetti is basically just a whole bunch of these little circles. So what I did was I came in and I created this, just a, the same thing that we did here. Um, and I'm using these colors right here. So the very first one is FDE 8A7. The middle color is FABC67. And then our darker color here is 8E600B. And that's going to create the gradient that we have inside of this little circle here. I'm going to change my uh, lighting angle a little bit. So I want this coming off the top somewhere. Just want to make sure that the light is coming from the top and not the bottom. We're going to use linear and we're going to scale it to 100%. I'm going to go ahead and save that so we don't have to keep on doing that. Okay, now that I have that first one set up, letter V on the keyboard to select it. I'm going to bring the size down. And then I'm going to hold my Option or Alt key and then just make a copy of it. So you can kind of put these wherever you like. This is going to be a full group right here. Or you can also rasterize it and save it. I like to keep them separate so that I can move them around if I want to. Come back to my layer where I've been working. Press the letter B on the keyboard. Make sure I'm still in that mixer tool. And I'm going to bring my brush up so that I can get all of that in there. Option or Alt. And now we have those shapes loaded into our brush. So I'm going to lower the size. Make it really small. And now we can make a pile spaghetti. You can see how these brushes are so easy to work with. So, so far we've made icing, licorice, spaghetti, and a whole bunch of different tube effects that you can use for pretty much anything. Uh, I know they're very popular for typography and things like that because they have, they do have that 3D effect to them and they're, they're amazing. They're beautiful. The last one I'm going to show you is something very similar to what we did here. Okay, so I want to show you this one right here. I'm going to bring it up a little bit. So I just loaded this and you can see it's very similar to this one. It's just a tighter piping effect. Let me show you quickly how to create this one right here. We're going to start with that same ellipse tool, except for this time we're going to make it kind of longer. So it's going to be more like an oval. And this one is um, 48 pixels wide by 128 pixels high. I'm just ballparking this, but you want to have this general shape right here. And then I'm just going to add this color to it. And I'm going to change my direction to zero. Okay, so once I have that first one created, I'm actually just going to put all of these in a group because I need them out of the way. So I'm working with this one right here. Let's grab all of the rest and move them into group two. I, I just need them out of the way because it's going to get confusing with all of those layers there. So I'm going to make a copy of this just in case I want to make changes to it. Option or Alt. Just drag it down um, and that's going to make a copy of it. With my copy, I'm going to right click and and choose rasterize layer. 
I'm going to turn this top one off and I'm going to make another copy of that. So option and then drag it down or option or alt key and then drag down. With this second copy selected, I'm going to press the command and T or control T on the keyboard and then I'm going to press the option or alt key. Uh, all this is going to do is allow me to set an anchor point here. So I'm just going to click once I and you'll see that little kind of anchor thing right there uh, and I'm going to set my anchor right here at the bottom and then I'm going to drag this to about 25 as close to 25 as you can get. Okay once I have that set I'm going to press enter to accept it and now on my keyboard I'm going to hold the shift option command and the letter T and that's going to duplicate that layer again shift option command letter T and just press the letter T over and over and over again until you get something that looks like this now you have you're gonna have a whole bunch of different shapes here that's why I put all of the other ones away so I'm gonna grab the first one hold down the shift key grab the last one command and the letter E to put those all on one layer letter V on the keyboard and I'm just gonna shrink this down now you'll notice that this one that I made looks different than the first one that I created and that's fine that's why I kept this extra one here just in case I want to make changes or I don't like the blue on the inside or whatever I can always come back to this one and then just follow those same steps to redo the entire process and actually I'm gonna move this so that I can get a better selection. So I'm going to move that up here. Now in my layer, letter B on the keyboard, I'm going to bring this down. Option or Alt key, click. And now we've got that icing effect. And you can see the colors are very different than they were in this first one. If you don't like the way the uh, gradient came out, you can easily just change up the gradient a little bit to get something different. To learn more about working with the mixer brush, check out one of the two videos that's up on the screen right now. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, thanks for watching.